Well, hello, Drama Fest. This year at Drama Fest, as you know, we had to go online. But despite that, we did not want to miss the opportunity to showcase student work from across the province. And so we adapted. And with the help of Cape Breton University and the Boardmore Theatre, we took our showcase to YouTube. Thank you so much to everyone who worked on these shows. We know how much hard work goes into a show in a regular year, so seriously, congratulations to all of you. All right, Drama Fest, let's get to it. Here at Cape Breton University, tradition never stands still. Ours is a tradition of possibility, inspiring us to become the leaders of tomorrow in creating a world we can be proud of. Ours is a tradition of new, and everyone is welcome. Welcome to Written by a Kid, audio dramatizations of stories written by students in grades 3 and 4 at Robert Kemp Turner Elementary School. And transformed into radio plays by students in the Drama 11-12 class at Clark District High School. In this episode, we hear from Jamie with their story, The Lost Scratching Post. Red with their story, Sam the Computer. Claire with their story, The Cowgirl. Ashton with their story, The Dog Named Lucy. And Hala with their story, The Cat Doctor. And now sit back, relax, and get ready for The Lost Scratching Post. Hi, my name is Jamie, and my story is called The Lost Scratching Post. Once there was a brown cat, his name was James. He was 10 years old. He was puffy. And every day, James scratches his green fluffy scratching post. He bought his scratching post. Until one day, someone stole his scratching post at 9 o'clock. The robber was wearing black. James was sad that his scratching post was gone. Because of that, James went on a big search. Because of that, James climbed the K2 mountain, the hardest mountain to climb. Because of that, James found his scratching post, but it was guarded by wolves. Until finally, James got his green, fluffy scratching post. James was happy. Ever since then, James locks his green, fluffy scratching post to the ground. The end. The Lost Scratching Post by Sam Lawrence, based on a story by Jamie. Once there was a brown cat. His name was James. Meow. He was 10 years old. He was puffy. I am 10 years old, but I still work out. And every day, James scratches his green fluffy scratching post at his house for his workout. He loves his green fluffy scratching post at his house. My green fluffy scratching post is my favorite ever. He loved his scratching. Until one day, someone stole his scratching post at 9 o'clock. Where is my scratching post? It's only 9 o'clock. It's too early to steal. How will I get my scratching done today? The stealer stole James scratching post from James' house when he was sleeping, but James didn't hear the stealer because he's 10. James' hearing isn't very good. Where did the stealer take my green fluffy scratching post? I have to find it. Because of that, James left his house and went on a big search. He walked down his street and through the forest. I don't know if I'll ever find my green fluffy scratching post. I've been searching for three hours. As James continued to walk in the forest, he spotted something green and fluffy. Is that my green fluffy scratching post? James walked closer to the green fluffy thing in the forest. And once he finally got close enough to see, he realized it was a huge green fluffy caterpillar. Ew! A huge green fluffy caterpillar! The huge green fluffy caterpillar really scared James. He had never seen one in real life before. James went sprinting through the woods from how scared he was. I have to keep running. What if the huge fluffy green caterpillar steals me like they stole my green fluffy scratching post? As James is running not looking where he's going, he trips and falls and when he looks up, he sees K2 Mountain, the hardest mountain to climb. Oh my goodness. Is that the K2 Mountain? I have to climb it to see if my green fluffy scratching post is up there. 
Because of that, James climbs up the K2 mountain. This is the hardest mountain I've ever climbed. Good thing I work out every day on my green fluffy scratching post. James felt sad thinking about his green fluffy scratching post, but that made him even more motivated to find it. I have to keep climbing so I can find it. I cannot live without it. James finally reached the top of the mountain after an hour of climbing, and he found his scratching post, but it was guarded by wolves. James started to hiss at the wolves. He was so angry. Hiss. The wolves got scared right away when they heard James hiss. James was very scary when he wanted to be, even though he was 10. The wolves ran down the mountain and away into a cave because they were so scared of James. They knew they stole from the wrong cat. My green fluffy scratching post. I finally found it. I cannot believe those wolves would take my scratching post like that. Oh well, they smell musty anyway. At least I don't smell bad after a workout like that. James walked back down the mountain and back through the forest happily with his green fluffy scratching post until he got home. It smelled a little smelly from the stinky walls, but he didn't care. He would wash it when he got home. All James cared about was that his green fluffy scratching post was safe. I am so, so, so happy that my green fluffy scratching post is safe. James was finally back home, and he took his green fluffy scratching post straight to the bath. James gave the green fluffy scratching post the best bath it ever had. Green Fluffy Scratching Post, I am so sorry that the wolf stole you. It will never, ever happen again. I am buying the best security system ever. James made his way to the store to buy a security system. He bought the biggest, strongest system he could find. He went home. Okay, this will never let any wolves or anyone else steal you ever again, Green Fluffy Scratching Post. James changed his Green Fluffy Scratching Post to the ground and set up the rest of his security system and they lived happily ever after. Meow, meow, meow. The end. And now sit back, relax, and get ready for... Sam the Computer. My name is Wen. My story is called Sam the Computer. Once there was a smart computer named Sam. He was so good, he gave away free balloons. He was a small green laptop. He is a very nice computer. He loved helping people, and every day he helped people. He made a helping people business. He put up signs that say, help people. He picked up trash, until one day Sam made a copy of him, but the copy was evil. The copy's name was Spike. Spike was a big red laptop that had iron bat printed on top of him, and Spike wanted to make people miserable. Because of that, Spike prevented Sam from helping people. Spike stole people's purses. Sam tried to stop Spike, but he couldn't. And just when Sam was going to give up, he saw a big stick. Because of that, Sam picked up this big stick. The stick was long, pointy, and full of spikes. The stick was perfect. Sam got his aim right. Because of that, Sam smashed Spike multiple times with the stick. Sam whacked Spike in the head, and on the keyboard, he got smashed up and down. He got smashed side to side, until finally, Spike broke. His motherboard was broken. His top was smushed. The only thing left of him was letters from his keyboard saying, I will be back. Ever since then, Sam helped people. He helped old ways cross the street. He helped people with groceries. He picked up more garbage than before. The end. Once there was a smart computer. His name was Sam, and he was such a good computer. He helped a lot of people. I am so tired from work today. I help many people, but I love helping people, so it's okay. <sighs> I should get to sleep. Wait, I have to check tomorrow's schedule and see what I have to do. So my calendar says that I have to pick up trash tomorrow. It's going to be hard work. I have to get up early tomorrow because of that. Let's get to sleep. Good job today to me. <sighs> The next day, he woke up on time so that he could wake up. I slept so well. Let's get the work done. He found that there's too much work to do, but he has to get it done by the end of the day. Too much work. It makes me frustrated. Hmm. I should make a helper by using my file. Maybe I need two helpers. I like yellow and blue. Let's make that laptop. I should name them Lucy and Bob. 
Lucy is a yellow laptop and Bob is a blue laptop. Hi everyone. Finally, I was made by you. Thank you so much, Sam. Hi, uh, I am Bob. Nice to meet you. Hi, Lucy and Bob. I want you guys to help me. That is why I made you guys. It's nice to meet you guys. Sam shows and teaches them how to work. I don't think we can finish this work by the end of the day. So much to do. No talking. Just use your computer. Sorry. I will do my best. At noon, they have some lunch and they are talking. Sorry I was rude to you, Lucy. I also think I should make one more helper. I made a red laptop. His name is Spike. Hi, everybody. I'm glad to see you. Everyone except Spike thought Spike seemed not good. They thought something was going to happen. Let's get the work done. Uh, uh, this is so funny. What are you watching? You must help us. Uh, 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 uh. While they were working, suddenly there was no noise and sound. Why is it so quiet? As he looked around him, nobody was there. Where are they? Wait, I can hear something. Uh, uh, hey, come here, hey, guys. Hey, 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 you, Spike. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, well. Are you kidding me? You can't steal them away from me. He isn't listening. He grabbed the stick that was on top of the shelf. Hey, Spike, you have to let them go right away. Otherwise, you are going to be messy. Oh, well, I am ready to have a fight. I don't think you're going to win against me anyway. You never know. I am stronger than you. As Spike jumped on Sam, <laughs> Sam's stick attacked Spike's laptop. How dare you? You can't do that to me, but I am still fine. How about this? Spike tried to jump from another direction again. <laughs> After that, Sam attacked his laptop again using a stick. <laughs> ah! Here we go. You can't blame me anymore. I don't need you anymore either. Spike kept screaming, <laughs> and he was squashed by Sam finally. <sighs> Sam thought the fight was over, but he found Spike's screen. What is this? The keyboard was typed. I will be back. Oh, sounds scary, but I don't care anymore. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. We, we were saved, saved because, because of, of you. you. Let's, Let's get, get the, the work, work done. done. Let's get the work done. We, we have, have to hurry. hurry. They got done with their work by the end of the day, finally. Today was kind of a massive day, but you guys did a really good job. Thank you so much. Can you be my stuff for me from now on? Of, of course, course, yes. Ever since then, they helped each other a lot. They are proud of themselves and each other. They did a really good job and had a good time without knowing Spike would be back soon, as they almost forgot about Spike. Oh, well. The end. And now sit back, relax, and get ready for... The Cowgirl. My name is Claire. The title of my story is called The Cowgirl. Once there was a cowgirl. She has brown hair and green eyes. She has jeans, shiny shoes, and a black and white shirt. She also loves horses so much. Her barn is red and white. She has buckets of food and stalls. The cowgirl can smell the horse food and hear the horses. And every day, she would go see her two horses named Buttercup and Eve. Buttercup is a boy and 13 years old. Eve is a girl and 15 years old. Buttercup and Eve loved the barn because the barn has a lot of hay and food to taste. Until one day they had to go to a big show for horses. Sometimes the jumps are dangerous. The cowgirl fell off Buttercup and broke her leg. She had to go to the hospital and get crutches. When they were at the show, Buttercup knew that the cowgirl was so happy. So Buttercup went fast and then she fell off Buttercup. Because of that, some of the jumps were dangerous in the show. The cowgirl wanted the show to be dangerous, too. In that moment, the cowgirl went home with a bad leg and a sad frown. She heard horses crying so much. Because of that, the horses felt so bad for the cowgirl. When she fell off of Buttercup, Eve rushed to the hospital to go see the cowgirl and make her happy. Because of that, Eve went to the hospital and made some cupcakes. The cupcakes were vanilla with pink and blue sprinkles on top. The cupcakes smelled so good. Until finally, the cowgirl was good again and went home. Eve and Buttercup and the cowgirl fed them. 
Then the food tastes very good and smelled good too. When they were done eating and drinking, the horses took a nap. Ever since then, the cowgirl got her cast off. She had some water that tastes good. Then she rode Evie in a safe way. She did not fall off. The end. This is the Cowgirl by Kaylin George Wagner, based on a story by Claire. This is a story about Claire the Cowgirl. She has brown hair and green eyes. She has jeans, shiny shoes, and a black and white shirt. She also loves horses so much. Oh, I just love horses. I love them so much. They're my favorite thing. Her barn is red and white. She has buckets of food and stoles. I love the smell of horse food, and I love hearing the horses. And every day she would go see her two horses named Buttercup and Eve. Buttercup is a boy. Nay. And thirteen years old. Eve is a girl. Ho! Oh. And fifteen years old. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> this kind of hay is definitely my favorite. It's yours too, May. Oh, yes! It tastes so good. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. But don't forget this water. It's just as good. Oh, yes, yes, it is, of course. I love the barn. Me too. Until one day, they had to go to a big show for horses. <laughs> Sometimes the jumps are dangerous. Some of the jumps were dangerous in that show. The cowgirl wanted the jumps to be dangerous too. All right, Buttercup. When you get to the ultra mega super high jump over there with huge spikes on it, I want you to go as fast as possible. What? I, I don't think that's a good idea. Come on, Buttercup. We gotta show them that those jumps don't scare us. Um, I, I don't know. Trust me, it'll be fine. You can do it. It would make me very happy. Oh, all right. Next up, play the cowboy with a trusty steed, Buttercup. Whoa! Ow! <gasps> The cowgirl fell off Buttercup and broke her leg. Mm, my legs, they hurt so bad. She had to go to the hospital and get crutches. Ow! Ouch! Ugh, ouch! In that moment, Claire the cowgirl went to the hospital with a bad leg and a sad frown. She heard her horses crying so much. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. You know, I feel just awful too. Oh! She was so happy. I, I just wanted to make her even happier and win the competition by going super fast. I know, Buttercup. Oh, a boo hoo. A boo hoo hoo. A boo hoo. Cheer up, Buttercup! I have an idea! You... you do? Yes! We can still make her happy! Come on! Follow me! Eve rushed to the hospital to see the cowgirl and make her happy. I think this is the way the ambulance went. Look, there's the hospital where Claire is. Let's go in! Wait! What if they won't let us in? Oh, don't be so shy, Buttercup. I'm sure everyone there is very nice. Oh, uh, okay. This person at the desk looks smaller. She might be able to help us. Hello, we're looking for Claire, our cowgirl. Have you seen her? Why, yes, she's just in the room over there. Thank you very much! So nice of you horses to come by and visit. She's very lucky to have such thoughtful horses like you. Gee, that's real nice of you to say. Have a great day! You too. See? Wasn't she nice? Yeah. I told you they'd be nice.
There she is. Hi, Buttercup. Hi, Eve. Buttercup, you stay with her. I'll go make cupcakes. Yay. Eve walked into the next room, which just happened to be a kitchen. Mmm, those cupcakes smell so good. Nay. Here you go. Vanilla cupcakes with pink and blue sprinkles. Just the way you like them. Mmm, these are so good. Boo! They ate the cupcakes until finally the cowgirl was good again and went home with Eve and Buttercup. And the cowgirl fed them. Man, this hay still tastes the best. Nothing, nothing can beat a good haystack. Agreed! So refreshing! Best water ever! Agreed. Oh. oh, it's been a, it's been a big day. Yes, I'm feeling very sleepy. I think I'm ready to. Then the cowgirl got a cast off. I think I need a glass of water. Mmm, this water tastes so good. Ah, uh, that's nice, you know? I think I've learned my lesson. No more pulling any crazy stunts. I'm going to ride Eve and Buttercup in a safe way. She rode her horses in a safe way. Oh, oh. Nay. She did not fall off. Oh. Nay. The end. <laughs> Now sit back, relax, and get ready for... The Dog Named Lucy. My name is Ashton. The title of my story is The Dog Named Lucy. Once there was a dog named Lucy. She loved to go outside. She is a black dog, she is four, and she is a big dog. Every day she would go outside and play. She had so much fun, she had so much mud on her. It was so funny. Until one day, she was sad because her dog friend was moving. She stopped going outside. I was sad, so was Lucy. But I was much sadder. She looked bad. Because of that, she went so crazy that she tendles. She is too crazy. Because of that, she went too crazy. She ate 600 toys. She ate 800 lunches. She ate my sister's. Because of that, she went too crazy. She ate 50 schools. She ate my mom and dad. She ate my cat. She ate my dog. Until finally, she was not mad or sad. The good thing is, I'm happy. Lucy is happy too. Ever since then, she loved to go outside. She is now more funny. I love Lucy so much. She is so cute. The end. <laughs> Dog Named Lucy by Kayla McKinnon, based on a story by Ashton. The Lipton's family held many burdens. The mother, Lynn, Toodles. works two jobs to support the family and the father, hey. works during the day and takes off the night to take care of the kids. The kids are Laura, hi, and Lenny, hey. They are four and nine, and despite their hardships, what always brought them smiles and joy to the small family was their dog, Lucy. <laughs> Lucy is a beautiful Chow Chow rescue that they adopted very young, a few months after Laura was born. Lucy is a very hyper dog. Every day while the kids were at school, Lucy plays in the mud puddles and lay in her backyard with the neighboring poodles, Maya and Ashton. Babies, I'm going to work now. Are we ready for school? Almost. Okay, kids, go say goodbye to mom. Mommy, 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 look what me, kitty, and doggy put on Lucy, and look how funny she is. The small child held a cat and dog stuffed animal. She was very fond of the two of them. Lucy had a rainbow headband behind her ears. Oh, Laura, I'm sure she didn't want you to do that, but she sure does look cute. Aren't you cute, Lucy? (laughs) Oh, you are too funny. All right, Lenny, I need one special hug before I start my day. Okay, mommy, have a good day. You too, honey. Where's my pretty Laura today? 
Oh, there you are. Have a good day at school, okay, sweetheart? Yes, Mommy. You have a good day at work, honey. You too, sweetheart. Okay, Lucy, you be good. I'll leave the back door open. Mom said she'll come to feed you today at lunch. Woo! Lucy, is she gone yet? Yeah, Maya, finally. Now we can work on our machine to take over the world. Hurry, let's go. We don't know when they'll be back. You guys, we've been here in the underground lair for a year, working on our plan to take over the world, and we're almost ready. All we need now is fuel for us. My inside to the human world has given me a small paper drawing of all of us. I have it in my hat. Lucy, we have something to tell you. What is it? Is there something wrong with our big machine? No, the machine is fine, but, well, we came to say goodbye. We're moving. Moving? And leave me to do all the work? You can't go. We will start the machine with you now. Then we need to go. Now? Who's going to go into the machine? You are, Lucy. We can't. Taking over the world is your mission. We started this mission because we didn't like having the humans telling us what to do anymore and revenge for not letting us eat chocolate. I know you wanted to join us because you were tired of getting told what to do and proving that you're stronger than the humans. We can no longer live out our dream, but you can. I don't want to do this without you guys. Maya, Ashton, time to go. Where are you guys? We need to leave. We need to go now. Quickly, into the machine, Lucy. Fine, but I'm going to miss you guys. We're going to miss you too. I feel amazing. My body is so strong. But I'm so hungry. The machine made Lucy insanely strong and insanely hungry. And inch by inch, you could see her slowly starting to get bigger. Oh no! I've got to get back! Lucy's here! We're gonna play upstairs. You did it, didn't you? How do you feel? Weird. Really weird. I'm sad, but I feel so strong. Maya and Ashton... Are gone. My dad told me in the car today. I'm sorry they're gone. Thank you. Right now, we have to focus on you. You can stay here and rest while the powers you were given settle in. I'll fake being sick so I can take care of you. Okay. The next day... Here, baby. We'll put you to bed. Lucy can watch you for the day. Okay, girl? Good girl. Okay, Laura, honey. Please be good and try to get some sleep. I'll be home soon. Bye, Dad. Okay, Lucy. Eat. And Lucy began to eat. After all the food in the house, even that which was for humans, she began to eat 600 toys, and the plastic and glass was feeling her, and she keeps growing bigger. And Laura keeps finding more and more to feed her. Lucy, you've grown so big. Can I ride on your back? Yes, come here. Okay, we need to keep going. Are you sure? What else can I eat? Go to the school. What? Laura, there are kids in there. Lenny is in there. I can't possibly think about- No, there is no school today. The classes are empty, and you won't hurt anyone, but you need food. Now eat. Lucy ate, she ate, and she ate until all the schools ever made were gone. Laura! I'm hungry! All I have are my favorite stuffed animals, Lucy. I can't give them over. Laura! I'm hungry! I can't control it! If I can't eat them, I'll find the next closest thing! Laura saw the hunger in Lucy's eyes and sadly gave her favorite stuffed animals to her to eat. But Laura was still happy. They had done it. Now she and Lucy, with her newfound powers, can finally live their dream of ruling the world. You really are a cute puppy, though, Lucy. Thank you, Laura. The end. And now sit back, relax, and get ready for... The Cat Doctor. My name is Kala. The title of my story is The Cat Doctor. Once there was a cat doctor and she loved being the doctor. 
She had a pretty pink doctor coat, purple pants, and a nice smile. She was 28 years old. She was a brown cat with blue eyes. And every day she would give cats checkups and make them feel better, so much better, that they could run around, be silly, and go crazy. Until one day the cat doctor got so sick, she could not go to the doctor because she was the doctor. She was at her house on her bed. Because of that, she had to call her friends to see if they could be the doctor that day. She even had to call a celebrity called Dove Cameron. She plays as Mal in Descendant. Because of that, she did not find anyone, not even a mouse. She called everyone that she knew, even some of her family. Because of that, every cat was sick and could not go to the doctor. They had to stay home, and all they did was lay down. Until finally, the cat doctor called Love Cameron again. She was ready at that time. She went to the doctor and helped all the cats. Ever since then, whenever the cat doctor got sick again, Dove Cameron would be the doctor. They all never had to stay home ever again. They had the best life ever. The end. The Cat Doctor by Amy Wilde, based on a story by Kala. Once upon a time in the city, Catopolis, there was a cat doctor who loved being the doctor so much. There was was nothing she enjoyed more than making cats just like her feel better, and it helped that she was good at it too. There was never a cat she couldn't make feel better. Every day she walked into work with a pretty pink doctor coat with sparkles on it, purple pants, and of course, a nice smile. She was 28 years old, the youngest cat to ever be such a great doctor in the entire city of Catopolis. She had soft brown fur as well, and nice blue eyes. Finally, it's Friday! One more day of helping cats to go! Hi, how are you? She was greeting the receptionist, who was a striped gray cat that used reading glasses. She always read a book during the day as she waited for cats to come in for their regular checkups. (sighs) So tired. It's been such a long week. Well, make sure you get some rest. I don't want you to get sick. Every cat should be able to run around and have as much fun as they can. Hmm, I guess so. Here are your list of checkups for today, by the way. Thank you! I'll be going to my office now. After that, the cat doctor prepared everything she needed off her checklist for the day. She got heartbeat checker thingies, eye, ear, and a mouth inspector thingamabobs. And even some needles, which even made her, the cat doctor of all cats, feel a little squeamish. Ugh, needles! Gross! It's a good thing that because of her loving, helping other cats feel better, that the day went by super duper quickly. She didn't even have to use needles since she was so great at being the cat doctor that she could figure out what was wrong in only minutes and give the cats any medicine they needed. Her last patient of today walked in the door, looking tired and sad. The cat doctor's heart felt hurt at the sad sight. Hi. Take a seat. Tell me what's wrong. The cat doctor pulls out a clipboard and places it on the desk and clicks her pretty sparkly purple and pink pen. She scribbles down a few little tiny things, like a name and the cat's fur color, which is so many pretty colors. It had brown, gray, and butterscotch fur spread everywhere. (sighs) I have been having the worst this week. I think I've got a cold, or a fever, or the flu. I don't know. Please help me, cat doctor. The cat doctor writes down what the patient is saying before grabbing the things she set up crazy early in the morning at the start of her shift, pushing the needles even more far, far away. She hates the needles the most. First, she checked the patient's heartbeat. Thump, thump, thumpity thump. It sounded like a little fast for a cat heartbeat. She noticed right away. That's no good. What's no good? Don't worry. Nothing a little medicine can't fix. Then she made a grab for one of her mouth inspector thingamabobs. Open your mouth and say meow. Meow. Immediately, the cat doctor shone the light inside the poor cat's mouth. She noticed the issue. It's definitely a bad cold. Take this medicine. It should make you feel all better and ready to be silly and go crazy again soon. Thank you, cat doctor. You really are the bestest in Catopolis. 
The cat doctor packed up her things after that and headed home excited for a weekend of relaxing and sleeping on her couch. When she finally reached home, she yawned and immediately flopped onto her bed, tired after a long, hard day of helping cats become better. Ah, <sighs> finally, a bed. <sighs> the morning comes, and birds are chirping outside, signaling a great day. Normally, the cat doctor would be excited to get up and watch birds, but something wasn't right. Something that would make what could be the best day ever into a bad day. The cat doctor couldn't figure it out, but her head hurt and she barely wanted to move out of bed. But it wasn't because she was comfortable. Suddenly she coughed <coughs> and coughed again <coughs> and again. <coughs> and she was sneezing too. <coughs> That's when she figured it out and she meowed out of frustration. <coughs> she was sick. The cat doctor got sick. But how is that even possible? She's the cat doctor, the best in Catopolis. She didn't even realize she could get sick like this, but even more coughing really made it obvious for her. Oh no, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She took a look at all the medicine she owned in her house, but nothing was good for what she had. She didn't even know the real problem, and how was she supposed to tell? She was the doctor and usually told other cats these things. I can't give myself a checkup. How will I get better? She hoped that maybe some extra rest will help and decided to take another nap. But when she woke up hours later, the cat doctor felt even worse than before. <coughs> what can I do? She decided to call her receptionist to see if she could help. Receptionist, yes, please help. <coughs> I think I've caught something bad from one of my patients. Do you have medicine? None that I know would help 100%. What am I supposed to do? I am the cat doctor of Catopolis, the bestest there is. <coughs> Without me, I can't help the sick cats of the city. And I can't even figure out what's wrong because I am the doctor. Hold on, I'll find a way. You just get some more rest. The cat doctor did her best to rest, but she was just so worried. The receptionist did everything she could even calling Dove Cameron, who plays Mal in Descendants, in hopes that maybe she could be the doctor for the day. But Dove Cameron was too busy. So you couldn't find anyone? Not even a mouse? Not even a mouse. I even called some of your other friends and family, but they just don't think they could figure something out. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are there any appointments for sick cats? Like a gazillion. Please get better soon, cat doctor. We need you for the cat's health. Who knows what will happen if you're gone too long. They'll have to stay home and just lay down. But you can't just not get better. You're the best of the best. The cat doctor of Catopolis. Can you try calling Dove Cameron again? Maybe she's no longer busy. I don't want to get too hopeful. Please. I will. The cat doctor sighed, falling back asleep again because she was so tired from being so sick. She eventually woken up by a knock at her door. Huh? Who's that? The cat doctor went to the door to answer it and was shocked at who stood there on the other side. Hi, I'm Dove Cameron. I play Mal and Descendants. I'm here to be your doctor for the day. Really? Thank you so much, Dove. No problem. Here, go sit back down so I can give you a checkup. Dove Cameron pulled out all the stuff the cat doctor usually had at her doctor's office. She had a thermometer, heartbeat checker thingies, eye, ear, and mouth inspector thingamabobs, but no needles. The cat doctor was happy about that. Dove Cameron even pulled out a ton of medicine that would make the cat doctor feel all better again. Here, open your mouth and say meow. Meow. And let's check your temperature too. Dove put a hand up to the cat doctor's forehead and yelped. Ah! when she felt how warm she was. Wow, you're burning up. That's for sure a bad fever, cat doctor. Will I be all right to help cats get better soon, though? I don't want to be sick forever. Of course. Here. Dove hands the cat doctor some of the medicine she brought. Take this for a couple days, and you'll be free to help all the cats in Catopolis once again. Like you always say, cats need to run around and be crazy, and you are a cat too, not just the doctor. Thanks so, so, so much, Dove. How can I ever repay you? 
There's no need for any of that. Just give me a call whenever something like this happens, and I'll be sure to help so no more cats get too sick without your help. Dove Cameron left after giving the cat doctor some pets, and because of her help, the cat doctor always called Dove Cameron whenever she got sick again, so no cats had to stay home and lie around sick again. They had the best life ever. The end. You've been listening to Written by Kid, radio play adaptations of stories created by students in Miss Wright's grade 3 4 class at Robert Kemp Turner Elementary School. And reimagined as radio dramas by Miss Arsenal's Drama 11 12 class at Cold Harbor District High School. And was recorded in December of 2020. This is a Halifax Regional Arts production.